I want to say. You All right. Right now. <laughs> I think we're live. <laughs> Hopefully people can see us or hear us. Yep. I see us on my iPad. So that's good. That is great. If, so if you are tuning in, if you can just put something in the comment box to let us know you hear us and Posh Paw Resort is here. So that's good. And we'll get started in just a minute or two. Hopefully everyone is doing well. It feels like a Friday, but like you said, no, it's only Tuesday. I do feel like it's kind of a Friday though. It does. It feels kind of like Friday. There's Edmund is here. He says happy Tuesday, just to remind us <laughs> that it is Tuesday. And Deb is here from Canine College. So that's good. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. We do have lots of people joining us, so um, I'm gonna just let you kick it off, Susan, and all right, I'm post some comments in the comments boxes. All right. Well, welcome everybody. We're glad to have you here, and we're um, excited to know that some of you are in the stage to where you're reopening and trying to feel figure out the safety protocols for that. And so we really happy to have our go-to clean and <laughs> disinfecting and all things. No stopping. Keeping people Stop. healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Forbes from Health Technology. So now I know, why don't you tell folks a little bit about what you've done just because of COVID as far as, you know, setting up new protocols and and I know you've been super busy just like we have so what's been going on sure have. Uh, thanks you guys and once again it's great to be with the dog gurus woo, woo. we love being with you guys. <laughs> it's awesome um, yeah we've been really super busy here at, at health technology uh, a lot of phone calls coming in people are concerned about how to clean disinfect their homes can you believe that that's wow. that's huge right now uh, too, and, and also because they, they're out looking for cleaners and disinfectants, they can't find them. Uh, Health Technology is super proud because we're able to stock up and help out even outside of the animal care side as well. Cool. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. So when it comes to cleaning and disinfecting, uh, odor control and, and hand hygiene, uh, it goes across the board. It's just not animal specific. Uh, but working, you know, closely with you guys, and we know there's a lot of questions going on about certain protocols uh, for animal care facilities. Uh, that's when that's where our specialty comes in, you know, us, us as consultants and so forth. So, and with us also having a pet resort that we operate as well, um, we we get to try out all the new cool uh, protocols as well before uh, we implement them. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So, um. What are you recommending? Let's start with clients, you know, dropping off pets, um, picking up pets. What are you guys recommending? We'll start with if they are coming to a pet facility, what's your recommendations? Uh, what's kind of going around in the industry, we, we're taking some of this from the veterinary side. A lot of them are dropping off their pets outside. Uh, some of the technicians will actually walk out, uh, take the pets, into the building so they're not letting the customers come into the lobby okay uh, we think that's really good it's a, it's a great protocol because you get to kind of isolate that the 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 customers from walking in the door um for your own facility uh, one of the questions came up was should we have hand sanitizer stands outside okay. for the actual staff members that are walking out to go grab uh, the 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 pets that are coming in, you know, mm -hmm. their customers, and I said, yeah, that would be a great protocol too, as well as they walk out, you know, they can use a hand sanitizer and then go ahead and take the animal into the facility. So uh, the curbside drop off, I think that's what they're calling that, is a, a really great protocol. We like the way that's working, um, and most of the customers seem to like it as well too. So they're not fighting back on that. I did ask that question of a few of our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, what's their response to it? They actually like it. Um, it's fun for them too, as well, because, you know, we love to see their pets come in anyway. So we're yeah. super happy. Um, and, and they like, they, people, people across the country understand this, this social distancing thing that we have to do right now at this time just to stay safe. Yeah. I was going to say that we've had a lot of people who 
probably will continue some of their curbside service after this is all done because their clients like it and the staff likes it too. So it might be a new, a new thing to add. Um, we did have one question real quick and that was what can we use in place of Lysol spray that doesn't leave a residue? Is there anything that you would recommend for that? Yeah. Um, we actually, we would recommend uh, like a, like triple two, one of our products, a uh, cleaner disinfectant instead of Lysol spray. Um, when it comes to Lysol and phenolics and so forth, we don't like to use uh, Lysol around cats, uh, the phenolic that's in that type of product. Uh, cats can't process phenols, and so it's it's a dangerous product to use around cats. Um, so a product like, like the Triple Two product would be great to use uh, for all of your quick cleanups to spray down and wipe off the counters, doorknobs, and so forth. Uh, they bring up another good point. That's that's a good thing too. Any high touch areas, we want to use. Uh, we want to clean those often, often because we're always touching those. Yeah, we actually were talking to one of our members in Alaska, Carrie Campbell. I don't know if she's on or not, but in there, they're required to t clean all their high touch surfaces every hour, based yeah. on their laws up there. So that's what they've been doing and. They kind of, you know, I think that's a good best practice. We did have um, Barbie, I'll put her post comment here. As a pet sitter dog walker, do you recommend we you what do you recommend in using in the homes to keep leashes sanitized or keep surfaces clean? Um, so that's a good question is if you've got someone actually going into someone's home, are your products, would they be good or do you have a, something you would recommend for that kind of thing? Yeah, our products would be great for that too. Triple two is fine to use in homes, um, schools as well. Uh, actually, I have a meeting tomorrow at a school. We're going to go in and, and show them some triple two protocols on how to clean the schools. Um, so those would be great products to use at home. Uh, we actually put uh, a really big e-blast out to just about anybody we can think of because we have a lot of people calling, asking for disinfectants all over the country. And so if you've been to the grocery store lately, you know it's hard to find any kind of cleaner that's effective against this particular coronavirus. And so triple two is effective against it. That's so we're great. recommending that. Yeah, it's a, it's a hospital grade disinfectant cleaner so, and it's great to use. It's not corrosive. So they're not going to be harming any of their, uh, you know, counters and, and different surfaces that they have at their home. And is that do you mix it? Does it come already mixed or what do you how do you have to use it? Uh, Fortunately, it is in a concentrate form. So we do, we mix it at two ounces to a gallon of water. Uh, and uh, a gallon of that product will make you like 64 gallons of ready to use product or 256 trigger sprayer bottles. So that's quite a <laughs> lot of product for you. It's a good that's savings good. for you at the house. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. I'm going to buy some for my house. Yeah, I just, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not cleaning my house and then people don't want to come over. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yeah. really. I should be doing more for my house, though. All right, um, we did have. I didn't to answer that question on the leashes. I believe that some the lady. Yeah. Lady. So yeah. on your leashes, um, uh, the the fabric part of that thing could be uh, laundered. You can put it in the laundry and, and wash it. Uh, a good laundry sanitizer will help you out with that as well. Uh, the clips that you have on there can be sprayed down with a product like Triple Two or so to help disinfect the clip part. Um, and frequently washing those leashes is what's going to give you the best results. And then we have a lot of people I know that are just not taking the leashes from their owner. So we have a lot of facilities where they'll have the dog come in, the owner takes their leash off, and then they replace it with a facility leash, which then, you know, reduces you from having to even deal with that part of it as well. Um, we did have Edmund said, is triple two available as a spray or is it uh, just, you would make the concentrate yourself? Yeah. You would mix the concentrate yourself. It's not in an aerosol type um, uh, format currently. But you okay. could put it in a spray bottle and basically it'd be the same. You just may have to wipe it. Correct. Yeah. So, I don't know if Susan will be able to talk at all. We're just going to answer questions. Okay, right. <laughs> this is how it goes, Mel. We have an idea of what we're going to talk about, but we're just going to talk about these questions now. Um, so Sherry was asking if the fur acts as a fomite, could we be aerosol aerosolizing virus particles once we're spraying the dog in the tub? I'm, 
I don't know. I think really if you're bathing the dog, you're washing all that away. Yeah, that's that's a good question. But uh, the washing of the dog is going to get rid of most of that stuff off of their fur um, and off of their bodies as well. So I would I would highly just recommend wash wash well. Um, the aerosolized particles. Um, if you're doing it at home, uh, open the windows. You know, get some good airflow to go through. It's it's possible there could be some there. I, I I'm more. I'm more uh, focused on the washing of the dog, getting getting the heavy the heavy stuff off of their fur. And uh, one of the things we want to recommend too, I've, I've been hearing this go go around. We don't recommend using disinfectants on dogs to spray them. Uh, you can't disinfect a dog. Disinfectants are not labeled to be used on skin uh, or fur. So um, just washing them with a good shampoo um, and, and probably washing frequently is going to be the, give you the best results. Yeah, and I think the other thing you have to pay attention to if you're putting something on a dog, whatever you're putting on a dog, is the dog is likely to lick its fur. So whatever you're applying to a dog has to be safe if they ingest it, even though that's not what you're intending to use it for, but that's the likelihood. And so there are obviously different protocols for what you would want to put on a dog. So I would definitely pay attention to that as well. Yeah. And also too, since we're talking about that, cause we're, you know, our hands too, um, for people that are in the facilities, working in facilities, uh, something came up the other day, we were watching another, another deal. Um, I highly recommend for the staff people, if, if you're an owner that's watching this, make sure that your staff have the proper uh, protection PPE in your facility. No matter what clean or disinfecting you're using, uh, because to be we want everybody that's working in the facilities to be as safe as possible. Uh, I get a lot of questions about gloves. Do you think gloves are good for us and so forth? Gloves protect me as I'm handling animals or if I'm scooping poop or dealing with urine or whatever. Uh, yes, they, it protects me. And so right now, the way our world has changed with this whole COVID thing. Wearing gloves, personal protection is is huge, and we're we're really stressing that for people that are working in the facilities. Make sure you protect yourself, and for the owners that are there, um, you know you got to pay for all of the their their things that are going on in their buildings as an owner, uh, you know. And so you want to make sure that your staff members are as safe as possible. If they need to wear gloves, goggles, a mask when they're cleaning and so forth, especially with this COVID going on. It's a good time to get to invest in that PPE. And I know masks have become a like almost like gold out there. Um, I mean, maybe we should start making masks and make some money. <laughs> <kind of. laughs> there you uh, go. And they're coming out with some really cool designs out there, too, as well. But the masks are, are really great to have, you guys. And so I, I really stress that. Really focus on your PPE. No matter what clean or disinfectants you're using out there, uh, be safe. Be as safe as you possibly can right now for your staff members and also for the owners. So you're not having to pay for someone getting you know, hurt by using a, a product and, and, and so forth in the facility. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. Susan, you want to go with some of the other questions that we had? Yeah, let's go ahead and kind of expand on, you know, we talked about clients doing all the handoff at um, curbside, not even coming in. What, what are some recommendations to keep staff safe? Because we have heard from some of our members, you know, some staff members are scared to come back. They may be um, living with people who have high risk conditions or other things. So I know sometimes we focus on cleaning for the pets, but what are you recommending as far as protocols to um, assure staff that we're doing a good job keeping the facility safe for them? Uh, let's see. So let me, see. your question is kind of, are you mean it is in the facility themselves or when they have to deal with the customer outside? No, I would say within the facility themselves, any updates to normal cleaning SOPs with COVID, um, you know, just being around coworkers and pets coming in and out. Are you guys recommending anything different? Um, yeah, great question. We are, we're, we're recommending that they just clean more often. Uh, especially okay. your high touch areas, the phones, um, you know, your front door, they've got to go in and out to get the animals. If you have 
uh, doors that that access to the other areas in the facility, those latches and so forth, those things should be cleaned frequently because we're we're also handling the animals. But then we got to reach up, grab a you know grab a door handle or grab a latch to go through that gate. Uh, those should be cleaned frequently. Um, we also are recommending to to if you if you have the staff and the ability, step up the cleaning protocol. Maybe clean just a little bit more. Uh, maybe if you do two bulk cleaning and disinfecting protocols, add a third one in the in the middle if if possible if you have the staff at the time. Uh, one of my one of my customers told me she she does not let do dogs pee on the floor. It is clean and disinfected immediately. She's told her staff that already. Um, they're grooming when they're going to grooming. They are they're cleaning everything the groom table of the the bar that comes across. I mean they are just going crazy cleaning. And she said she just has to have that because she wants her staff to feel safe working uh, in that environment. And so I told her as I was like, man thumbs up to you. That's awesome that you guys have stepped up that that protocol. Yeah, yeah, and I again the facility i was talking about in anchorage alaska they they actually had a video that they did for their clients as well as their staff where they're they set a thing of um wipes sanitizing wipes outside the door and when their clients come in they want their clients to take the wipe clean the door open the door drop the dog off and then take that wipe and clean it and then they have a trash can out so they're actually getting their their clients to help with some of that, which makes the clients feel safer too, which just keeping all of that um, protocols up way more than normal. We did have two questions real quick before we go on, actually three. One is, um, is there a distributor near, near Illinois? And I know Katie is actually in Chicago, but. Yeah, we, we have, uh, we're able to uh, facilitate for you guys out in Illinois. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can call us at the eight hundred number here, and uh, we can get them taken care of. Not a problem. And then Deb was asking if there's a, any kind of lag time for your products right now. So, is there any? And I know a lot of places we've talked to. Obviously, they do have shortages because it's such high demand. But how are you guys doing with that? Just handling that supply chain. Yeah, currently right now we have a lot of triple two in stock, which is great. Um, uh, we I have to applaud our our people uh, in the office here. They were pretty smart to get that going. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're we're not on any back order right now currently for triple two products um, or any of our degreasers as well. Degreaser is another great product that we recommend for detail cleaning for the facilities too. So if some of the facilities right now that even though they're not as busy as they used to be, um, we, we feel like the country is going to do something here in maybe the next couple months or so. And so we're recommending that this is a great time to get your detail cleaning going where you're really getting in every nook and cranny and, and getting all that old stuff off the walls or the floors and so forth. And then um, this is a great time for that, too. So triple two is available. Our degreasers available and also our, our eliminator product. That product you guys see behind my head back there uh, is available. We are fully stocked, ready to go. Yeah, we've had actually a lot of people I know have been using their PPP money to bring their staff in a couple people at a time to do deep cleaning because they've got not that many dogs in there. So that it's a great time to do it. So another use for your staff PPP money if you're trying to figure out how to spend that and be able to have it forgiven. Um, we had a couple questions and I don't know, um, Mel, if you have any experience in this or Susan, if you want to talk about it, but we've had a couple questions about UV light to disinfect facilities and whether that's effective or useful. I don't know if you can talk to that at all, Mel, if you have any experience with that. I do a little bit. Um, uh, as far as the technology is concerned, UV light's great uh, for to for disinfecting, cleaning the air. Uh, it's super. That's a, it's an awesome product to have in there. Um, the, the air volume in a buildings is is massive. You do have to, I would say, consult with some people that handle UV lighting. Uh, I know pet therapy is a really big, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the pet care industry. Right. Uh, maybe give uh, Annette a call because she's she's the guru at cleaning <laughs> yeah. the air. <laughs> exactly, it's true. <laughs> so um, I would work with I would uh, definitely reach out to her for those questions. 
Uh, for facilities that are very, that are enclosed a lot, don't have a lot of uh, airflow through, uh, I highly recommend going with something like that uh, because, yes, you want to clean the surfaces. You want to clean the air. We want to clean our clothing. You know, anything we can keep cleaning is is going to give us the best results. And so I would I would probably reach out to Pet um and, and talk with them. Uh, that product that they do have uh, will be effective against this. And then. Uh, I'll talk, we can talk about this one real quick, Susan. Um, Sandy was asking operating protocols once we're open for training, such as number of clients, how they should come in, setting up stations with barriers. I mean, I think all of those are important. I think the whole idea of any high touch surfaces being cleaned down is critical, no matter what your service is, whether it's daycare training, lodging, pet sitting, grooming, whatever, like any of those high touch surfaces, those protocols need to be in place. For trainers that are doing group classes, I think really this should be just being able to reinforce what we all already want to do as trainers, which is we, I was telling someone this yesterday, most trainers in a group class actually want people 12 feet apart because one owner has a leash that's six feet long and the other owner has a leash that's six feet long and we don't ever want the dogs together. So I would just be saying you're really reinforcing that distance. Um, we talked yesterday about this is a great use of climbs. So put a climb where you want each person and that area around the climb becomes that person's space. Mm -hmm. And you could even put barrier, like you could put tape on the floor to say, don't go out of this spot. But I think the climb or any kind of platform acts as a really good bear, a really good visual clue to say, you stay here with your climb and don't go over towards that dog's climb. Um, because I do think social distancing, I think masks are gonna be important to keep people safe as well. Um, I don't know if you have any other ideas for that, Susan, or if Mel, you have any input from your training clients. No, I think <clears throat> you covered it. Yeah, sounds good. So that, and then uh, this is a great question. This comes up a lot, Christy. I love that you asked this and said, Mel has to be sick of telling you this. <laughs> <laughs> but the different, but this is really important, the difference between cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing. So if you can touch on that, no. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so for cleaning, cleaning is, is us removing uh, dirt, germs, uh, hair, uh, insects, chemicals, anything from a surface. That, that would be us a physical, uh, physically removing that off of the surface uh, or even in your clothing. Um, as well. So we're, we're looking to make sure that, that that surface is free from those those type of contaminants. And uh, that's usually done with using a detergent based type product. Uh, let's say triple two, triple two, we spray it on there. It's a great cleaner, but it also has a disinfecting component. Now, when it comes to disinfecting, uh, we're talking about killing 100 percent of the germs on the surface. Now this can only be done is, as long as the soil load on the surface isn't too high. And I, I got to thinking about this this morning when I was in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm always thinking of things when I'm sitting in the shower, I guess, because I'm getting clean while I'm in the shower, there right? So, <laughs> so on all of our disinfectant cleaners, as far as I know, and I've, I've done a lot of research on master labels, all of them can kill germs in a 5% serum soil load is what they technically call it. Basically, it would be something on our surface like body oil, dirt, uh, hairs, and so forth. Uh, once that soil load is higher than that, the disinfectant cleaner will, uh, the, the efficacy has become a compromise a little bit. Mm -hmm. So in order to get the best clean, the best disinfection on the surface, that soil load needs to be removed with the cleaner disinfectant. So uh, for us at HT, we always recommend uh, products that have some kind of surfactant soap in it so you can actually get the stuff cleaned off so the disinfectant has some time to work on that surface microscopically in there to kill the germs that it, that, that product is labeled to kill for. So uh, disinfection, uh, once again, and, and this is just kind of on the layman terms, we're killing 100% of the germs on the surface. Now, we're just talking about a kill. This is efficacy. It doesn't mean that the surface is technically clean, 
they needs to be cleaned by us using the detergent to wash that off, remove the dirt, germs, hair, insects, and chemical too as well. So if your chemical has some type of, you know, even if it's just a disinfectant, we well, got to remove that chemical off the surface in order for that surface to truly be clean. Sanitizing is uh, about not up to 99.9% .9 kill on a surface um, or remove of the germs as well, too. So you can actually clean germs off of your, say, like your hands and get a 99.9% .9 removal of germs. They didn't kill them, but we removed them. So the practice is to clean well. Always have some kind of detergent base that you can remove. And also that that disinfectant component can be killing germs, too, as well. So if you have both things happening, you have better results. That's the best way to do it. That's really helpful and important in our industry that everybody understands. And I think also teaches staff to understand the difference between cleaning, sanitizing and disinfecting. So I'd like to kind of circle back to tools because as you were sitting there describing, I was looking at a mop bucket just getting, you know, grayer and everything over time. So I think we also have to think about the tools we're using to apply to either clean or disinfect. And as your mop bucket gets dirtier, your disinfectant isn't going to be able to be as effective or work. So do you have recommendations like what tools should we be using? Like, how often do you change cloths or um, especially with this COVID-19 to make sure we're keeping things really clean and disinfected? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. We've um, we've actually we actually have some pictures of what a triple two bucket looks like. Um, fresh, freshly made, uh, a working bucket <laughs> and then when it's dirty and it needs to be dumped. Okay, uh, dumped um, so we actually built that for, for one of our customers uh, because they, they have them posted up and, and so forth. And it's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. It's a great tool because it helps them. Um, a lot of times I'll be working at a vet hospital and these guys put a they make a bleach bucket, bleach water, and it's sitting there for three days. Well, bleach, once you mix it with water, is only good for about 15 minutes. And then when you introduce any kind of organic, whether it's dirt, hair or anything to that solution, it's no good at all. It's, it's done. So um, uh, I like looking at their eyeballs when you tell them that it's only good for that long. And they're just like, it's been here for three days, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been moving dirty water around on the floor, basically is what's happening. Yeah. Um, so uh, all, all your disinfectant cleaners will say when uh, the solution has become visibly dirty to pour it out and, and make a fresh solution. So you will see that on the labels. And, and that brings up another point. It's super important to read your use directions on your disinfectant cleaners because they give you specific ways to be, it has to be used in order to get the best results that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then we need to clean our buckets too. Yes, clean your mob buckets. Yes, because they those get really nasty real real yeah. quick. So, yeah, yeah, and then change your mop heads out too. Changing mop heads out is 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 huge. You can most mop heads can be laundered, uh, right. so you can go in the laundry and wash. Um, so I would recommend have a couple of extra mop heads ready to go. You take that one off, throw that one in the wash, put the new one on, and 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 continue to mop because your mop is either it's releasing solution or it's sucking up solution. Actually, they're doing both. So we're putting it down on the floor, but it's also picking up dirty solution, too. And so we'll dump it in a mop bucket, wring it out and so forth. Uh, if you are in the market for an auto scrubber, that actually will put product down, scrub, suck up and recover the dirty solution in a dirty tank. So it keeps us a clean solution and the dirty uh, solution separate. Uh, and it does the cleaning of the floors for you a lot faster than than mopping. Yeah, I love my auto scrubber. And I did, I wasn't on live, but I was listening because I was looking for something. But I totally made that face you talked about when <laughs> when you said it, it's no good after 10 minutes. I was like, oh, that is that is not good. Um, yeah. So we did have a couple questions. One, and this is why I was actually trying to find this for Edmund, but he said on the website, your um, the homepage, it shows a barrel of triple two with wipes. Do you have that product and where is that? Where does he find that? Uh, we have the triple two in stock. Currently, we don't have the wipes 
uh, we have the wipes. We don't have the buckets. The, okay. The plastics. Uh, plastics have become like gold in our country. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, right now, those are on back order to get fulfilled, but we do have the disinfectant cleaner available. Triple Two is available right now uh, for customers that want to call us at the 800 number and we can get you taken care of. Okay. And then Donna, going back to training classes, should we have masks be worn? I think that's going to depend on your state and county and what those laws are. And also, I think it's going to depend on how comfortable your clients feel. I've, we've been talking a lot about reaching out to your clients and really talking to them about their concerns with coming and what is going to be good to have them feel safe. And you may find that some clients don't care and you may find that other clients are going to feel a lot more comfortable if they know everyone is required to wear masks. But I, and then I also think whether or not your state is requiring them is going to, is going to come into play too. So and I, I also think, what are your trainers feel comfortable? Right. Yeah, because we have had some people that the trainers don't necessarily want to come back. So it's really talking to them about what's going to make them feel safe as well. So I think there's a combination. And then a shout out to Puppy Playground that's here. They love health technology. So um, if you don't have Puppy Playground equipment, it's the equipment that's out in a lot of the play yards. So definitely check them out as well. Really easy to And then Patrick, what did you say, Susan? Puppy Playground is really easy to clean and disinfect. That's one of the reasons we love that. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's a well it's definitely for that. Yeah, it's definitely, I had, um, before I had Puppy Playground equipment, I had Little Tykes Playground equipment in my facility, and they tell you that stuff's easy to clean. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, not unless you take it apart, which is not an easy thing. Um, so, yeah, Puppy Playground equipment is much easier to clean and is designed for dog daycare boarding facilities as well. Um, so Patrick said, any thoughts on having staff or customers disinfect themselves if they're coming inside? What can they apply? How could they treat their clothes or shoes or bags or cell phones? Uh, you know, that's a great, that's a great uh, question. Um, disinfectants are not designed to be used on your body, on your person. Uh, actually, we like to wear PPE when we're using a disinfectant, so we're not getting that onto our skin and so forth. Um, I would just make sure that the staff people that come into work, you know, just it, the more you 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 take a shower, you clean yourself, uh, the the better you are. Uh, obviously, you, you're not taking showers at work, um, but wash your hands a lot. You know, washing hands, hand hygiene is crucial right now at this time. Um, so, but don't use disinfectants on your skin at all. Uh, uh, no matter what anyone tells you, the product is not designed to be used on skin. Uh, only on hard, washable, certain on porous surfaces will you get some kind of disinfection uh, protocol. But on your skin, use the regular hand soaps, um, the body body washes that are designed for you to do. Uh, I would wash, you know, take showers frequently when you get home. Um, Stuff like that, unless you are equipped with showers at your facility, which would be kind of nice, I guess. <laughs> then uh, if, if your boss lets you have the time to go do that, that'd be great. But use use the products that are developed for your skin. Don't use any disinfectant stuff on your on your body or your clothing. Your clothing, you can't disinfect clothing. Uh, we can only sanitize clothing. So uh, no one's ever bought a laundry disinfectant. We only buy laundry sanitizers. Bleach is a sanitizer in laundry for your whites. So um, there's no disinfectant in clothing. Yeah, and I think it really for those that have ever done breeding, dog breeding, where when the puppies are really young, you know, you ask people to just wear clean clothes and maybe put sh covers on their shoes if they had, if they went someplace like a farm or someplace before coming to the pup, see the puppies. I mean, I think that's about the only thing you could really do is ask them to not go places before coming to work. And even then it's, you know, the most important thing is really washing their hands. I don't know, Susan, if you have anything else to add for that. Well, I just thought they could do a change of shoes, maybe in the car, a pair of shoes for home and a pair of shoes for work possibly. Um, I think, also being cautious of what you ask them to clean their phone with because some cleaners are not good on electronics. 
So if that's a concern, again, as a business owner, I would provide something that would be safe and then ask them to clean um, before they come in. And I would probably discourage as many bags as possible. I mean, um, or if you just have a locker that's theirs where only the, the it goes into the locker, if they set it down somewhere, then they should clean up on that surface after they pick it up and put it in a locker or whatever. It becomes part of your cleaning protocols. Right. So um, Karen asked, what's the, what is cleaning and disinfecting difference between germs and viruses, especially on porous surfaces? I'm throwing that one to Mel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. They, so the question is, what's, what is the cleaning and disinfecting differences between germs and viruses? Okay, uh, let's just take that part. Uh, uh, germs is a is a just a general term that we use for these these bugs, viruses. We've got different viruses. We've got bacteria, and so forth, fungus, and so forth. So we'll use germs as a general term. Um, the disinfecting cleaners have to they are labeled to kill a number of different um, germs. Uh, or uh, I'll say bacteria, viruses, and so forth. Uh, what we do is that that particular thing is on the master label of the disinfectant cleaners. So there are a lot of different types of chemistry for dis disinfectant cleaners out there. What we look for is a hospital grade disinfectant. So these are the things that we see. Um, I guess we could say like that that we're that are most common in our facilities that walk through the door, especially in pet boarding and daycare facilities. Uh, so we'll look at stuff like that uh, and that how that disinfectant is built to take care of, of a wide group of uh, viruses and, and fungus and so forth that may come to your facility through the animal care side. Hospital grade disinfectants are actually used in human hospitals. So um, they also take care of the human uh, uh, contaminants and, and germs that we would see also and, and things that would be in animals as well. And so that's what we look for when we put together a, a formula for our disinfectant cleaner, something that can go for both sides because we're dealing with both things in these facilities. Uh, I don't remember what the second half of that question was. It was um, how do they, is, is there a difference? And you kind of talked about this a minute ago with porous versus non-porous surfaces. Yeah. Okay, great. So a hard surface, um, what it comes down to is when you use a disinfectant on a hard, non-porous surface, uh, in order for them to give you a disinfection claim, they have to culture that surface after you've used that disinfectant to tell you how many germs, uh, how many of those contaminants were actually killed. So it's easy to do with a swab on, a say, a table. Uh, for carpet, um, we would have to... Uh, culture every fabric, every fiber on a on carpet, which would almost be impossible. Uh, technically, at this time, I, I haven't seen any research. Uh, we haven't come across anything yet where they've been able to give you a like a hundred percent kill. Uh, say, for instance, they were they were doing parvo. They wanted to see if we kill parvo in a carpet. Uh, they would have to be able to culture every fiber in that carpet area to tell you, yes, we did get that. We did kill that 100 percent. So uh, non -por uh, porous surfaces like my shirt, dirt, grass, gravel, wood, stuff like that. You can't get into the fine areas to give somebody that 100 percent kill claim. Uh, we can wash and clean uh, those surfaces so we can get we possibly we can get you some kind of sanitizing because we're removing. Remember, we're also removing the germs, germ load off of that surface, too. But you won't find a disinfection claim on anything that's porous. Not currently. I hope somebody's working on something. <laughs> and while we're on that topic, I know this came up before was whether or not you can claim any any product can claim that it kills COVID-19. And there's a process for that there basically, is. that basically says we think it will but it has to have fda approval but can you talk about that and is and what health technology products where they stand in terms of covid19 specifically yeah we can uh that's come up quite a bit 
And what ha what has come up is it's basically come down to the part that it's a, this is a coronavirus. And uh, if it's if your product is labeled to kill the human coronavirus, then um, you can take care of the COVID-19 because it's an emergent pathogen. So uh, as long as you have the human coronavirus in your master label, uh, then we can go ahead and put that claim that we can take care of it. Also, too, once again, where we're, we're back to cleaning, too, as well. So. Am I cleaning that virus off of my hard washable surfaces? Am I removing it out of, am I getting it out of my building? Yes, that's why the cleaning protocols are very, very, uh, very crucial for your facility. And also too, um, we, you can't just, you just don't wanna just disinfect. You always wanna clean and disinfect. Those two things together work together. That's gonna give you the best results you're looking for in your facility. So if your product has a human coronavirus, triple two has a human coronavirus in it um, uh, on its label, uh, we are, we're able to go ahead and, and get rid of that COVID-19. Okay, awesome. And then Andrew is asking this, are you familiar with a backpack unit that holds a bleach solution? You make it with tablets and it shoots out a mist and wraps around objects. She, he's seen it used in hospitals. Yes, uh, that would be an electrostatic type of machine. Uh, I am familiar with that type of machine. Um, uh, actually, it's interesting that you're asking that question. I was talking to uh, one of my uh, one of my guys that provides equipment, and uh, we got to talking about it. It's a very expensive machine. Um, the electrostatic part of the uh, product is a good it's a good technology. We haven't adopted that part just in just yet. We're discussing it and talking about it. Um, it's some new technology that's out there. Uh, the bleach part, uh, I don't really, to be honest with you, I really don't like using bleach product type products in uh, around animal care facilities. Because uh, if you get bleach and urine mixed together, it creates a gas that can actually kill you. So we don't use bleach type products. Um, Triple two can be used like in that type of electrostatic uh, type uh, machine. Um, those type of products can be developed to, or can be used in those type of machines, but bleach products we would stay away from. Interesting. I had not heard of that. Yeah. Well, I think we're, we're running out of time. I think actually we're way over time, but we appreciate Mel staying with us. And we know that this always brings up lots of questions. Um, I think the biggest thing to remember is as you start reopening and as the United States and other countries begin to reopen and get back to normal or whatever normal is going to look like, I think a lot of these cleaning protocols are going to be needing to stay in place for a while. Even if your state or county completely opens up and there's no restrictions, which I think that most places are phasing things in anyway. Um, so it's going to be a gradual opening. But I think you can anticipate that a lot of these safety protocols and cleaning and disinfecting protocols should stay in place. And I think really most of you should have those protocols anyway, but it's kind of goes back to what Mel said beginning at the beginning of this live Facebook live is that a lot of those might need to be increased. I think communicating with your clients and your staff is going to continue to be critical and really talking to them about what makes them feel safe and what makes them feel comfortable, um, particularly your staff as they start coming back to work. You may have to have those conversations to find out maybe what you think is fine might need to be increased to make your staff feel safe. And those are all conversations that you need to start happening that need to start happening now. Um, Susan, I don't know if you have any other uh, last minute comments about all of that in terms of opening. Um, I think it's just important to keep following through the steps after you've cleaned the surfaces, then how are you cleaning your equipment and tools and rags and the laundry sanitizer and follow it all the way through to now everything's clean and we're going to start over. Um, and again, you know, protocols on even staff may wear gloves when they're putting all this dirty rags and mop heads into the laundry to be sanitized and then throwing the gloves away. I think you need to, go from beginning to end of the process. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the more you educate everybody, Susan and I have always been big proponents that well-run facilities and 
um, whether you're grooming, pet sitting, dog walking, daycare, lodging, that you should be using your social media to communicate with your clients about what you do. Because what you think is totally normal might not ne necessarily be that way. <laughs> in mine and Susan's experience, those of you that are getting educated, those of you that are coming on these kinds of educational Facebook lives and listening to Mel, you guys are the cream of the crop. And so what you're doing is probably way more than what your competition is doing. So I do think you need to educate your clients about why you do what you do. And I think that's going to be more important now than ever. So you might think it's silly to do a Facebook live or a little, you know, two minute video on here's how we clean and here's how we keep the dog safe. I can tell you, your clients are going to love that. And it's going to set you set your business apart. So I would totally take advantage of that um, type of communication as well. Mel, do you have any last minute things you want to add just in I terms do. of opening? Yeah, I do. I'd like to say this. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give out our 800 number. I know I kept saying that and people are probably like, well, what's the 800 number, man? Give it to us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's 800-424-7536. Uh, once again, it's 800-424-7536 and that's health technology. Uh, we're also here to help to help to give us a call if you have some questions about your protocols in your facility. Uh, we can make some recommendations for you, help you out and, and get you to where you, the results that you're looking for um, and just help you help you get through this thing. This is our new norm. Uh, this is going to be our new normal uh, uh, that's happening here. And so uh, we want to be able to work side by side with you and just get you guys the cleaning results that you're looking for. That's awesome. And I want to thank you guys. You guys are the best. Ah. <laughs> thank you for having us on. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you guys. And for all we you appreciate guys. you coming on. We <laughs> email Mel and go, can you come on Facebook Live in a couple hours? <laughs> so we appreciate that. And we appreciate all of you for joining us for another 45 minutes um, on Facebook Live. We will um, repost this on our COVID-19 page, which is thedoggurus.com forward slash COVID-19. Obviously, feel free to, feel free to share it. Um, and then also, we do have a Facebook page uh, that anybody can join. So feel free to go there. I'll put that link um, on in the comments as well. So feel free to go there if you want to continue talking about anything regarding your pet care facility or your pet services, we're happy to talk. And also you can hear from other people and just find out what they're doing as well. So thank you again, Mel. Any last comments, Susan? Nope. Everybody have a great week and share your successes. What's working, what's um, keeping clients happy, your team happy, because that's what it's all about. And then we know the pets will be healthy and happy. Yep. Thanks everybody. All right, guys, stay safe. <laughs>